This is John at Happy Wife Acres, and today I'm going to run through how to diagnose and repair a small engine. This obviously is a chainsaw, but the things that I'm going to talk about, it doesn't matter if it's a chainsaw or a weed eater, as long as it has a small engine, it could be a push mower. So we're going to go through what it is you need to look for. Every engine needs three things to run. It needs fuel, it needs compression, and it needs a spark. A customer brought this to me. He knew very little about it. I think it had been in his garage for a while. So I'm going to run through these steps to make sure that those three things are working and show you what I do when I repair a small engine. Whether you are a homesteader or a homeowner, you probably have some small engines and hopefully this will help you. All right, this happens to be a steel 041 AV farm boss. Uh, it, it probably belongs in a museum. It, it's almost an antique, uh, a lot of metal on here. So I've already taken the blade off just to, uh, because it gets in the way. And so we'll get down to the spark plug and I'll first test the compression. I remove the spark plug, take a quick look at that, and actually doesn't look very bad at all. Uh, it should be kind of a grayish color, you know, black but not too black. Uh, you don't want it to be too white, um, but that's a good looking spark plug. So I'm going to clean that up, regap it, put it back in. To test compression, I use a compression tester. You can get these at auto parts stores. The end goes into the spark plug hole. So you just screw that in and pull the cord a couple of times to take the reading. Not plugged in, just give it a pull. Right, so the reading on here after a couple of pulls is about 100, and that's a good number for small engines. Uh, anything at least 90, up to 115 or so. But if you got 100, you got good compression, so don't have to worry about that. So next we're going to check the spark. And by the way, if your equipment was running fine and now all of a sudden it's kind of it's starting but it's running crappy, you don't need to check the compression. If it's starting in any way, you've got good compression. Uh, I tested it here because I don't know anything about this machine. All right, so the next thing is we're going to check the spark. This is a spark tester. Again, you can buy it at an auto parts store. And what you do is you've got the spark plug in. I'm going to connect it just like I would the boot, except this end actually goes into the spark plug boot. This is the boot, by the way. Okay. And then I'm going to pull the cord. And if there's spark, then there will be orange right inside of that glass window. So here we go. I'll try not to shake it too much. And I'll turn the lights down so you can see it a little better. All right, you see that orange flash? Yeah. So we have spark. The electricity is produced in the coil as the flywheel turns. So if the engine's turning, it's producing the spark. Hey, there's no battery on these things. All right, so we know that it is producing electricity for a spark. If you don't have one of these fancy toys, you can do the same thing with a piece of wire, a jumper wire. So what you're gonna do is plug the spark plug into the boot. Okay. Here's where the gap is, right at the end of the spark plug. So all I'm gonna do is hook this to the end of, not the electrode, but to where the spark goes to, the ground side. And then I'm gonna come up here and just hook it to ground, all right? So I'll just hook it there to the carburetor. And then when you pull, you should see spark jumping across that gap. There, you can clearly see the spark. That says that not only is there electricity being produced, but the spark plug is working as well, uh, making the electricity go across the gap, providing your spark. 
So in the beginning I said you need compression, spark, or electricity, and you need fuel. So we've already checked two of them. Now we're going to check the fuel. The fuel delivery is through the carburetor. It's this little square thing here. It's always at the end of the, your throttle. And yeah, so it makes it makes it go fast. So I'm going to take that off and we're going to clean it. And it's a very simple procedure. Just a few things you should know. So here we go. So these are all built about the same way. Uh, after you take off a couple of nuts, then this will just slide off. There's usually one or two gas lines. You just have to loosen that. And as it's coming off, you'll be able to take off the linkage. So again, they're all a little bit different, but pretty much the same. So I'll just get this off, then we'll focus on the carburetor. If you have trouble getting it off, I use a little screwdriver. You just put it in here, pull it out. Okay? While I'm taking it off, I always check the lines, and these are very, very soft and rubbery, like they should be. So, don't need to replace them. But you do want to make sure that if it has been replaced, that someone used actual fuel line, because non-fuel line will melt on you. Um, and you want to make sure that it's the correct size. This thing pulls up, and off comes the linkage. And now we have our carburetor. Okay. Carburetors, again, they're all built about the same. They will usually have two sides to take off. Here, one there. So I'll just take off the screws. Before I even started, I blew all this off with a compressed air. If you don't have an air compressor, I highly encourage you to get one. They're very handy. So there's a gasket under here. It, it likes to get stuck. This one's coming off pretty easy, so I'm happy about that. Alright, so I'll pull that off. Then on the other side, it also pulls off. <clears throat> if they get stuck, I use a razor blade. And I just start on one corner. And then very gently encourage it to come up. Don't want to rip this or you'll be buying another one and depending on the the age and the type sometimes they're cheap and easy and other times not so good <clears throat> so the best way to ruin a carburetor on a two-stroke engine is to buy the absolute cheapest fuel that you can it's mixed with ethanol and ethanol tends to just dry things out, the rubber. Um, but get the premium fuel. Okay. This actually feels good. I'm very happy about that. I'm going to try and get this off. Again, on this one, you've got all the time in the world. Do not rush it. I'm trying to find it, order it, pay for it. And that's going to take way more time. But if you can get it off and reuse it, it should run well for you. Okay. So for most carburetors, this piece right here is what will go bad. Uh, the, there will get some dirt clogged in it, but a lot of times it's this. It's called the diaphragm, and its job is to go up and down, pump, with the vibration. It should feel like silk. If it's crispy and goes crunch, 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 it's bad, get a new one, okay? So we got that apart. Then this right here lets gas in. There's a spring under it, if you can see. This goes up and down, there's a little needle valve in here. So it's held on by one screw. Sometimes the screw's on this side, this side. But you wanna hold that down with your finger so that spring doesn't come flying out. And then unscrew. And then let everything come out. Okay. There's a little little spring. There's the needle valve. Okay. The whole assembly. The last thing to take apart some carburetors have none, some have one, some have two of these screws. 
if it has two, it'll be marked with an H, and then somewhere it'll be marked with an L. Some you can't screw out because they have limiter caps on. This one it looks like you can. If you want to check where they are, screw them in all the way and count the revolutions that it takes to get there. Okay, so there's a half, a full, and I'm stopped. That's about right. On this one, a half, full, and I'm stopped. All right, so now you know where to set it when you put it back together, the initial setting. Go in all the way, come out one full turn. That's about right, anywhere between three quarters and a turn and a half. And then you adjust it once you get it started. The one marked H will always be shorter than the one marked L. And you can see in this case, L1 is the long one. So now the carburetor body is apart and all the pieces are off of it and it can be cleaned. So at this point, I'm gonna spray the carburetor body out with carburetor cleaner. You can get this at Auto Parts or Walmart uh, for two or three dollars. So what you wanna do is you wanna spray any orifices. You wanna wear eye protection here because this has a tendency to, to bounce back at you. It does burn a little bit if it gets on the skin. But where you took those high and low screws out, you want to spray through there. And then the ports, you just want to get it clean. The gas has a tendency to get uh, either gunked up or have like a film on it. And you want to get that off. You can open up these ports, spray down in there. Okay. Just want to get it clean. That's it. That's all you need. Okay. This dries very, very quickly. You can blow this out with some compressed air. Don't use a whole lot of pressure on this. Just be very judicious. Put too much pressure and sometimes things come loose. Not good. This carburetor did not look very bad. A lot of times there'll be a lot of dirt around here. Um, so it looks like it was very well taken care of. It, it probably just got parked in a garage for a while uh, before someone brought it to me. But you do wanna, wanna spray these off. Just clean everything. And then this little needle valve, you just usually just run it through some wet towels just to clean the tip of it right there. Now we're just gonna put it back together. The hardest part about putting this back together is that little needle valve. So you're just going to take that spring, drop it in the hole, take the needle valve, hang it. There's a little indentation right here and that fits over the spring. So I hold it on the sides and then I just drop this in the hole. and collect the spring okay everything's pushed in while i've got it held in with my finger i'm going to come back with the screw and screw that in okay don't be worried if it takes a couple of times some are some are more tricky than others once you get that screwed in it should go up and down okay that's good uh, the rest of it is putting it back the way you found it. With this thing, the metal part always goes down towards the body of the carburetor, okay? And just put the screws on, tighten them all back. Put the throttle linkage back on. And just get this over the posts, slide it down. Put on one fuel line, the other fuel line, and that's ready to go. Okay. So this may look intimidating to take apart and clean and on your car you may never have to do this on your car but on your small engines this is almost an annual activity because do it every spring it's not going to run very well because it's been sitting over the winter you left gas in it and now it's running like garbage so take it apart clean it put it back together 
it should only take you about 30 minutes at most. Okay. One thing, if I didn't know any history, if it's been sitting for a while, I'll look in the gas tank and make sure uh, that there's either no gas or if there is gas, I flush it out because water will tend to condense after a while in there and water droplets aren't doing you any good. They don't like to burn. So uh, this one has no gas. It's all evaporated out. So I'm going to put some fresh gas in here. Uh, there is no primer pump on this. Uh, so I'll just have to see if fuel is actually going to make itself up to the carburetor uh, and get it started. Uh, so I'll put the exterior pieces back on it. We'll take it outside and see if she cranks. As I'm putting it back together, checking out the air filter, you know, the manufacturers of these will tell you to buy one every year. Well, that's because they make them. So if you keep it clean, it'll last a good long time. Just spray them out. Get the dust out. Depending on how it's made, a lot of times you could even dunk it in some cleaner um, just to really clean it out and then spray it. As I take it outside, of course, I'm going to give it a few pulls, see if it starts. If not, I'm going to use this engine starting fluid. Again, auto parts store, Walmart, a couple of bucks a can. Um, just going to spray a little bit into the carburetor just to encourage it to start, get the fuel flowing. That's really what I'm trying to do. All right, I'll take a small screwdriver with me. And here are the adjustments. This is your idle speed adjustment. On steel, they mark it LA. I don't know what that stands for. I don't even don't even care to know. It just means it'll make it go faster or slower. So if you screw that in, it goes faster. Screw it out, it goes slower. Down under here are those high on top and the low on the bottom adjustment screws. So once I get it started, I'm going to adjust these two screws. I'm going to screw it in until it starts to falter. Then I'm going to screw it out. It'll run better and then it will start to falter. And then I'll go back in and then I will go out until it just begins to falter and stop. Okay. So you want it a little bit to the left of the sweet spot. And you don't want the mixture to be too rich. The high speed uh, that adjusts your RPMs on the high end. Go at full throttle and adjust that left or right and until it sounds good. I know there is a specific specification for this, um, but I don't know what that is. don't have that tool, so I just go by ear. And so should you. All right, I'm going to try and start this outside. And yes, I have a wardrobe change. This has been a couple of days since I started. Uh, I a lot to do on the farm. So I've got the top off just in case I need to use the starter fluid. There is fresh fuel in here and I did do a tank flush to make sure there were uh, no no solid parts in there. All right so here we go. All right there's some life. That's a good sign. I'm going to back off on the choke just a little bit and give her another pull. I did that with the chain off. Uh, I should have the chain on it to properly adjust it, but I don't like the chain just zipping around while I'm doing some initial adjustments, but it sounds great. <laughs> so I'm ready to call the customer and tell him, come pick up your, your chainsaw. So I want to take you through the process that I use to diagnose and repair small engines. Again, not this specific model, but any two stroke small engine. A lot of times you go to take it to somebody and you say, it's gonna cost me more to get it fixed than if I just got a new one. 
So in this case, we brought an old piece of equipment back to life. You can do this, okay? Don't throw your weed eater in the trash every year and go get a new one. Take it apart, it's probably a dirty carburetor. Clean it up, make the adjustments, and put it back in service. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, you can write. I do appreciate it if you would subscribe by, by hitting that uh, Happy Wife Acres logo. Go fix some equipment. Until next time, we'll see you soon on the homestead. All right, bye.